What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and in this video I'm going to show you how to turn this Raspberry Pi into your own DNS server and your own VPN server. So make sure you stay tuned so you can have one too. I'm going to be using a 3B+. These are a bit of an older board but they're very efficient for what you're going to be doing with it for Pi Hole. I'm probably just going to run Pi Hole off of this one, nothing else. So it's extra resources but I like the form factor and I like that it has a physical uh, RJ45 port. Um, I used to run it off a of Pi Zero, but running it off a of Wi-Fi gets a little annoying sometimes. You're going to need a micro SD card. They're very tiny, but they're very helpful. Um, you can store these at Micro Center really cheap. Uh, Best Buy. Uh, I would make sure you buy an actual good one. Uh, I wouldn't buy them off Amazon because there's a lot of counterfeit ones or ones that just aren't quality. So I would spend the extra money and go to Best Buy. Uh, if you have one local or another electronic store to get one because you don't want your micro SD card to die because it's not a good one then your pie hole goes out and then you have no DNS and now everything in the house is messed up you're going to need one of these USB to micro SD so this is a bit of a bigger one this is a tiny one it just kind of slides right in there you can see I have the SD card in here so this is so you can put the SD card in the USB slot and write to it and you're going to need a power supply for Raspberry Pi now you could get heat sink and a case but I'm not going to I'm going to actually rack mount this in a 10 inch server rack so I'm going to print something up for it so it could just sit right in the server rack <laughs> and it's going to sit right in the server rack and uh, be rack mounted. So let's get right into starting this up. So before you can actually write or even power up the Raspberry Pi, you got to put an OS on the SD card and we're going to use that using the Raspberry Pi imager. So if you come to the official Raspberry Pi site and you can go Raspberry Pi OS, you can see there's software, or you can just Google Raspberry Pi imager, you're going to download it and it's available on different OS's. I'm using Windows and you're going to install it. This is the easiest way to flash the OS onto the SD card. It is super simple and it's it's a good tool to use. I prefer to use this versus Bolina Etcher or I think there's um, there's a few other ones but I prefer to use this if I'm working with Raspberry Pi. So after you install it and you get it opened up it's going to look like this and then we can come in here and we can actually select a bunch of different utilities. So of course we can put the regular Raspberry Pi OS on there. They have some other ones, they have media OS's, so if you want to run Leap or Lec or some other stuff, um, you could put RetroPie, there's a bunch of different options, and then you could also have utilities, you can erase it so you can format the disk, it's super helpful, but for this video we're going to be using Raspbian Lite, or Raspberry Pi OS Lite as they call it now, and uh, we're going to use that, so you would come in here and you'd click Other. And then we're going to come down here, we're going to get the Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32-bit. So this is the first version you'll see listed. We want the Lite version, so this is going to be a command line because we don't need a GUI because we want it to be super lightweight to run the Raspberry Pi. We're going to do that. And we come in here and we can select our storage device. So make sure you're careful and you select the right device. You don't want to select, like I have a external hard drive and I don't want to write to that or erase it or corrupt it. So make sure you pick the right drive. That's my US, my micro SD card, and then we're just going to come over here, and there's a settings option. So if you're working with a Raspberry Pi Zero, you could actually come in here and you can configure the host name, you can configure SSH. So I'm going to do that because I like to try it out, see if it works. So the host name will be Raspberry Pi. I'm going to actually change this to Pi Hole. We're going to enable SSH, make sure so it has a password. I'll be the user, I'll set my password. I'm not going to configure the wireless LAN because this is going to be wired into my switch, but if you want to, you can, and then you can try to have it so it comes online. It's like, a, I've never really had good luck with it, but it does work sometimes. I'm going to set my time zone so it gets the uh, OS settings right for NTP, and then you just have some other stuff you can set, so I'm going to save that and work like right. So it's going to give you a warning, it's going to erase everything if you do have something on there. And then always watch because for whatever reason they reverse the buttons. So you would think yes would be here, but it's not, it's on this side. And we're going to let this write, and in the meantime, we're going to work on our... So we're going to let this write, it'll take a few minutes, it's going to write up, and it's going to write the OS to the SD card, and then when it's all done, we'll be able to start the next part. So while the OS writes, I'll just show you some of the other stuff. So this is actually my first Raspberry Pi I got. You can see it has a nice case. Um, I like the plastic case, but I did have a little bit of an issue with the lid that was on it. It held in some heat, so I just ran it without the lid. And here's a Pi Zero. These are great to run the 
Pi Hole and the Pi VPN on. Um, they're super lightweight, but they're wireless. That's the only downfall, and they use all micro interfaces, which aren't a big deal because there are adapters out here, but being that there is only wireless, there's no wired connection to it, it's a little tricky sometimes with the configuration. Like I said, I do prefer to use the full Pi board because it has the Ethernet port on it, and it has more USBs if you do need it. We don't really need it for this, but having the wired port is really nice, and it's it's a nice form factor. Like I said, it's, it's going to get rack mounted. I'm going to 3D print up a rack ears for it, so it's going to work out nice. The cases for the Raspberry Pis are just they're plain. You can find a whole bunch of cool ones. Um, I had a cool one that had like a fan on it, and it like screwed together. It was cool, but it, it, you don't need anything fancy. It's just a Raspberry Pi. It's a little small board. You can 3D print your own case if you have one, or you can go on Amazon and you could buy a case like this, and you could see the pie. It's cool, but uh, like I said, you, you don't need anything fancy. And if you have a 3D printer, you can print your own up. And my friend Nova Spirit actually has a video where he shows you how to design your own Raspberry Pi case. So I'll put a link to that in the description so you guys can check that out. So if you do have a printer and you are looking for maybe a little project, he shows you how to design up your own Raspberry Pi case and print it. So I'll make sure I link that down below. So now the writing process is working as we can see now it's on the verifying process so after it writes the OS the SD card it's going to come back through and it's going to verify all the files so it's just making sure everything is what it's supposed to be and then after this is all done it'll pop up and tell us we're good to go so let's just wait for that and then we'll be good. So after it's all done verifying you're going to get a whole bunch of pop-ups if you're on Windows it might show up as a couple different partitions so you might see stuff like this. Just click cancel. And then you'll see the Raspberry Pi imager will tell you that we're all good and we're good to remove it. So I'm going to continue and we're all set. So now I'm going to eject the SD card and I'm going to put in the Raspberry Pi and power it up for the first time. So we'll be right back. One more thing I forgot to mention. So underneath the board over here, you see there's a little silver tab. That's actually where you put the SD card in. So you're going to take your little SD card. You'll see the side with the, uh, uh, you'll see this side that has the, you know, the prong side I guess you're gonna put that in the board and you're gonna put it so it faces towards the board so it's just gonna slide in and you can see now the Raspberry the SD card is in the Raspberry Pi so now we're good it'll actually boot up from the SD card and then we have the little power supply interface is right over here so that's where you plug in your power supply now you're good to power it up so now we're doing the first boot up of the Raspberry Pi and I know it's a blank screen right now but here we are so we can actually see that it's going through the menus and it's doing the original setup for the first time. And in the meantime, while it does this, it should come online with a host and the password so I could log in and hopefully it'll come online with SSH. I do need to connect it to the network, so one more second. So we can see in this screen that this is the actual output from the Raspberry Pi. So it's at the login screen, it power cycled, and it has everything online. I have link lights from my switch to the Pi. So we should be online. So let's go over to my router and check it out. So we're actually in the network map for my router right now and it's showing me all the online clients and if we look over here, here's Pi Hole and I have an address, so I'm going to SSH into that address. So I'm going to open up Putty. I'm going to do 192.168.50.70 and I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so everybody can see. Mainly me because I can't see anymore in the SSH windows. I'm going to log in and it's saying for the first time to log in so we're all good. So I'm going to log in as Carmine. I'm going to give it my password. And we're in. So now we're in the Raspberry Pi for the first time. So we were able to log into the Raspberry Pi, so now we're able to do the initial config. So the first thing we're going to do is do a sudo app update. And it's going to work. It's going to process the update. And when it's done, we're going to do an upgrade. So this is just like running a Linux machine. So we're going to do a sudo app upgrade, attack Y. And we're going to upgrade the packages. So Raspberry or Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Uh, it used to be Raspbian, but then they changed the Raspberry Pi OS a few years ago, so I might refer to it either way. But it is a flavor of Linux. It's very similar to running Ubuntu. This is actually how I got really comfortable with the command line in Ubuntu because of using Raspberry Pi Lite. Um, it, it follows a very similar structure and everything like that, so a lot of the commands will carry over. So if it is your first touch in Linux, this is a really good way to learn it in Raspberry Pi. Plus, on the little board, it's simple, it doesn't take up a lot of room, it uses low power, and there's a lot of cool projects to do with it. So while this upgrades and updates, we're going to let this go, and then we're going to get the documentation up for Pi Hole and the Pi VPN so we can get that all set up. So if we come over to the GitHub, we actually have a lot of good information here, and you can see the project's been around for a long time. Originally, we have a file here from seven years ago. Uh, we can see the latest version came out on May 30th. 
and we come down here it gives us a description of Pi-hole so if you're not familiar Pi-hole is a DNS sinkhole we could also put a VPN in there so we can VPN into our house as having a DNS server so we are going to install they do package it together so you could have the VPN with the DNS sinkhole so we're going to install both of those I'm going to show you how to set it up there are also other, also other options you can do a DHCP server and some other cool stuff I have a good video on all the different things that Pi-hole might do that you might not be aware of, so I'll make sure I put a card up for that too and in the description. So if we come down to the install, they have different options of how to install it, but I just want to use this nice simple one command. So I'm going to copy that, we're going to come over to the terminal, we're going to copy it again because I don't think it copied it, we're going to come to the terminal, we're going to paste it in, and we're going to run it. So now you can see I have the Pi-hole coming up. And see it's gonna start pulling the command so as we start going through we'll have more options you can read through the github to see the other other information about it um, I haven't read through it in a while but we're going to use it today for the install so we got what, really what we needed from here for now so let's make the <laughs> putty session bigger and it's gonna start doing the prereqs to make sure everything's good and get ready for the install so when we get to the next stop I'll be right back so we have this nice installer that they give us and we can come over here and we can start with it. So it tells us we're going to transform into a nice network wide blocker. We're going to click OK. The course by hole is free, but you cannot you tend to donate so the devs can get you know their little spiff back. It is a very nice job of them to do this. Right next. It's gonna be a static address, so we are going to assign that. Um, we'll go into our router later and do it. It's okay for now, it's not gonna release it during we the install. So we're going to continue. So we're going to do yes. We're going to double check this. If you're going to change it from the le what it was least, make sure you get that done now. And you can do it right here in the installer. I'm not I'm going to keep it at 70. So I'm going to tell it yes. Um, during it, your, DA, your router might start. So it might give out a new lease. Typically in your home routers, if it sees the same MAC address come back online, it's going to give it the same IP. Uh, unless you have a lot of clients on your network, then it might give it a different lease, but we're going to be okay. So now you can actually pick your different DNS uh, provider for upstream. I'm going to use Cloudflare because I think they really are the best. So I'm going to click Spacebar. So this is just saying about the third party list for the block ads to uh, actually block, the, like to do the block list. So there's a bunch of different ones. We're just going to use the basic one for now. It's how it comes on every install. We're just going to click yes. And we do want the admin and web interface because that's the easiest way to manage Pi Hole of the Raspberry Pi or in general. We're going to click yes again. A web server is required. It's going to be kept internal traffic only, so this will be okay. Uh, I'm going to install it because it says it should. It's, you know, the default, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to enable query login so we can actually query through our logs and see the traffic. We could do the privacy mode, so I'm going to keep everything because that's the default. We're going to, hit, uh, oh, we're going to make sure we show everything, we're going to hit continue. And now it's going to go back to working, so we'll be back on the next step. Okay, so now the install is all complete and we're going to configure our devices. So this is just giving us the information for the server. So the DNS server is now .70. It's going to show you if you use a different scheme, you probably have something different. Um, your IP is going to definitely be different. You're not going to probably get a .70. If you do, drop a comment because, hey, what's the chances of that? Um, it should be a static IP, so it's just reminding you. And this is how we get to the web interface, and it gives us the password right here. So this is important to keep down uh, because you're going to need this to log in. So I'm going to go to log into the portal for the first time, and we'll go there. So when you come over here, it is the IP address slash admin. I know it tells you in the SSH that you could use, oh, you probably need that. I, I don't know. I never have good luck with it, but then we need this password. So I'm going to log in real quick and then we'll be right back. So after you log in for the first time, this is what your web interface is going to look like. So now Pi-hole is all set up and we actually have some ad lists by default. So they give us, these are how many domains are actually already being blocked. We can add to it. I have a video on how to do this. I'll make sure I link that below, but we just go over to Firebog. So I'll just search Firebog uh, Pi Hole, um, Firebog.net. So you can see over here, and it has a bunch of different lists that we can actually use. So we can add to the uh, block list to get better features. So if we want to come over here, 
it just gives us all these domains if you just copy these all over and put them in like I said I have a video on that so I'll put a card and make sure I put a link down below so you go through here and know how to do this but now our pie hole is all set up and once we put it in line and we can figure our router to use it it will uh, you know, start using it as a TNS resolver and block as and protect our household from any kind of malicious threats that might be on the internet. But we're not done yet. I also want to show you guys how to install Pi VPN. So let's do that next. So I just went over to Pi VPN. I'll link this below. It's a super easy install, and uh, like again, it's just another curl command. So we're going to copy this. We're going to open up our Putty session again. I'm going to clear this. And I'm going to do right click just to paste it in and it's going to start pulling down so this is going to pull the information so we can start the install and when this is ready for the install i'll show you what we're doing so now the installer is ready and it's just telling us that we can either use openvpn or wireguard i've used both openvpn and wireguard and lately i've had more success with wireguard it gives better speeds and i think it's a little bit simpler to use i like the openvpn too uh, it's really whichever one you prefer so we're going to click ok Again, it's going to be similar to Pi-hole. It's going to need a static address. This actually used to be in the same installer. I'm not sure what changed or if I grabbed a different installer. But you used to be able to install both of these at the same time if you wanted. But that's regardless of it. So make sure you have a static IP for your Raspberry Pi that's going to be running the Pi-hole and Pi-VPN. So we're going to click OK. And it's telling us that it doesn't have IPv6 enabled, which is fine. Um, We'll click yes just to prevent it. It looks like it's you know just a precaution. So we'll click yes. It's gonna give us our information again. We're gonna keep using the DHCP reservation that we already have. Uh, we're gonna use that. Okay. We're gonna click okay because I am the user. So I would be the user that's actually gonna be linked to the config. We're gonna click okay. And it's gonna go through. So now we get to choose if we're gonna use WireGuard or OpenVPN. In this video, we're gonna make sure you had to use WireGuard. Um, you can select OpenVPN if you prefer it. You would just click the spacebar to select it. But like I said, I want WireGuard. I'm going to click OK. And uh, if you want to see the differences, you can do some research. There's probably videos and other stuff showing the differences between WireGuard and OpenVPN. But like I said, lately I've been preferring to use WireGuard. It's just been more successful for me. So now we can use the WireGuard port. Um, we have different options so these are the default ports for the default port for WireGuard there are different options that you can use uh, I could say change it just so you have something a little different so if somebody does know that you run WireGuard they happen to find your DDNS or your public IP they're gonna be able to hit back to that port so you might want to change it so let's say I'm going to use 51826 there is a list of all the registered ports available um, make sure you have duplicates and make sure you write down the port if you change it so you know that going forward too but like I said you might want to just change it off of the well-known port because it is a WireGuard port everybody does know it and it would be an easy way for them to get in so I just changed mine so I click OK it's going to confirm it and now it's going to say that it detected the pie hole so if you want to use that so I'm going to click yes so that's going to make it that while you're on the VPN you can actually use the pie hole to add block ads so here's my DNS information. I'm going to block this out so you guys obviously can't see it. So I'm going to do this. So if you have a DDNS, you can use a DNS entry or you could just have it use your public IP address. Typically, if you're a household person, you probably have a, a um, DHCP public address. So it's going to change. You might need to update it as you go. If you have a DDNS, it would be the best option. And I have a video on that too. So I'm going to do that. So now I'm going to put in my DDNS. And I'm not going to share this either because I don't need everybody knowing it. Click OK. Click yes again. It's going to give us the server keys now. So your VPN is going to use a public and private key. And we're going to do that. Um, since it is going to have a public port open, it is recommended to have automatic updates configured or unattended upgrades. It gives it so your device is going to have the latest software to offer the best security. So I recommend you do that too. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Yes because I do want it. And we're going to let this load again. So now the setup is all done and we're actually able to start with the VPN. So it gives us the command to be Pi VPN add and that's how we're going to set up our profiles. If you have any issues and you need help, you just do Pi VPN help and we go from there. And of course, there's documentation on this as well. So we're going to click OK. And we're going to do a quick reboot just so we have everything applied. So I'm going to click Yes. It's going to uh, reboot, so we'll be back after the reboot. 
So now my session, I know my Pi is back online, so here's a little trick about Putty you might not know. So you can close it out and you can actually click restart session. And as long as it's online, you get the first try, it's going to restart. So I'm going to log in again. I'm going to clear everything away and we're going to do Pi VPN add. So we're going to enter a name, so it's in Carmine. It's going to generate all the information. And now we have the comp file. So if we go to the directory, we could do cd slash home slash carmine slash configs. And we can get the information there. So there's my comp file. And we're going to use WinSCP to pull it out. This is the easiest way to pull it off. So we're going to do 192.168.50.70. We're going to give it the information to log in. We're going to log in. We're going to click yes. We're going to go to configs. And here we can see here is carmine.conf. So, so I just made myself a quick folder so I can have my configurations. And WinSCP is probably going to be the best way to pull your conf file over. So I'm just going to drag it over. So I make a copy of it. And now if I go to my desktop, I'll have a version of it. And now we can see over here that I have my com file. So it's on my desktop and I can actually use WireGuard to connect back. So I'll show you that next. So WireGuard is super simple to work with after you get it installed. I'll put a link to that too. I actually showed how to put the setup WireGuard in the WireGuard server video. So I'll put a link to that video too. We got lots of links to other videos that we have. But now we're ready to add the tunnel. So after I open up WireGuard, we're going to add the tunnel. And I'm going to find it in my folder. So we're going to come over to PyVPN. And here's the configuration. And you can see, here we go. If we connect, it shouldn't connect because I am local. So we can't really connect to something that already is here. So before this breaks, I'm going to close this out. So like I said, uh, I had a local connection and I broke it because I'm in a RDP session because this is a VM that I use and connecting to it disconnected me. So I fixed that, but here we are. So just remember if you're local to your server and you try VPN into it, it's gonna probably break something. So try to be off the network to test it. If you're gonna test it on a laptop, put a hotspot on your phone and use your phone as a mobile hotspot to test it out. But that's regardless. So now we have Pyhole set up that we can go through and we can Query our data, we could use this as our DNS server. We could use this as our DHCP server. Uh, if I could find the settings. Um, we can go through here, you could do a whole bunch of different stuff. We have Pi VPN set up. So if we pull WireGuard back up, we can go in here and we could use WireGuard. And we have all that done off a of little Raspberry Pi. So we just did all this stuff and it's gonna run off a of little Raspberry Pi. Then we have running using very little power and we can just tuck it away in the corner and not even know about it. But there is one more thing we do need to know. So I use an Asus router. I'm going to show you how to open up the port real quick. Um, it should be pretty standard to everybody else, but we're going to come over to the WAN and then we have a port forwarding. And in here is where we actually need to open up our port. So you see we could have add profile down here and this is where we're going to add the port. So you can put the service name, uh, you don't need to, but I'm going to put in PyVPN. It should be using UDP traffic, but I like to put both just in case. So it's going to be an external port. So you remember we're going to use the port that we changed it to. So if you forgot, it's 51820. And then we would just come over here. I'm going to set that 51826, but that's what I changed it to. So you could set an internal port. So if you set it to use different ports, this is when you're gonna have to change it to. So it would be 51820. And then we're gonna come over here and you can match it up to the device that it is supposed to touch. So it can't reach the other stuff. So I named my device Pi Hole, so that's how it shows up. And you could also limit to source IP. So if you only want certain IPs from the outside to be able to hit it, you could set that here. That's how you set up the firewall rule so your VPN can actually reach the outside and you can reach back in from the outside to your local network using your VPN. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Using the Pi Hole as your DNS server for Pi Hole and to use it for Pi VPN is super convenient. It's a nice small board if it's nicely to tuck it away somewhere. And you can really do a lot with it for a little bit of money. Uh, you can buy these boards again for like 35 bucks. You could use a Raspberry Pi locator to help find one. You could even use a Raspberry Pi Zero to do this if you really wanted to. Uh, it's just a really good option. It's a simple project to do. It helps you work with your Linux skills, your networking skills, and everything all around. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
Make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and join the Discord. I'll have a link to that in the description as well with all the other links that we have in this video. But I'm trying to keep growing the community, so make sure you join the Discord so we can keep growing. I appreciate everybody subscribing and watching the videos. It, it means a ton to me, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. If you have anything you want to see coming up in the future, drop a comment below, and I'll start working on trying to make something for you. I have a couple video ideas that I'm working on currently. I'm just working on the projects on my own to figure them out so I can show you guys how to do it too. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.